Okay, so COVID slide is where there is an academic slide or academic reduction or deterioration or kind of um, going backwards in their learning gains due to the negative impact of COVID, whether it's closure from schools, whether it's because they don't have access to remote learning and so on. And um, back in July, there was a lot of April and July, a lot of statistics and simulation and kind of um, um, forecasts were coming out that people, scientists were doing. And what they expected was that reading at the end of this past school year, so in, before the summer started, they expected that the learning this year was going to be about um, two thirds of what a normal year is going to be. And then also for math, it was going to expect it to be about half. I think the results are not quite out yet because it's really hard to do proper assessment now that they would have been normally doing um, in this fall school year. So we don't really know the extent of the actual kind of differences, but also what people hypo thought was going to happen was it's not just that they're going to learn less, but they're going to come back more variable, which will put a lot of tax on the educators because they will have to accommodate all different kinds of kids that are even more variable. And then the, you know, if you think about the Matthew effect of reading and that there's small differences before COVID, then it got bigger and bigger and bigger over this time. And then they have to deal with that variability in addition to more than expected. So I think that has been the, that is what is expected. And now with the fall being half remote uh, hybrid learning or going back to remote now and all these kind of crazy things happening, I can't even imagine what's going on right now. Um, and then, but all these estimates, most of these estimates came from summer slide, the summer slide literature or absenteeism literature. And there's quite notable differences. I won't have time to, I can, but I won't go into the details of what the differences is. But the important thing is that it's, they're gonna come back with much reduced than the summer slide impact when they came back to school, if we did open. Um, my kids are still at home, for example, and then those who are at school, I know there's closures going on right now, but um, it's going to be much more variable. I think the critical piece also is that, of course, the libraries were closed and all those kind of things will hugely impact those who need access to those. Free summer programs and those things are not available, were not available back then, and those who can hire an online tutor or had computers at home would have had access to um, and, and may have even gained or may not have lost anything. So that kind of contributes the, to the variability. I think one thing that I really want to point out, which we might get to later, but I think um, the key thing is that there's, as much as we believe we're in a high-tech environment, it's surprising how much uh, how little people have access to high-speed internet, um, hardware, and um, all those issues are kind of related to um, impacting these high variabilities. And there's very hardly any, or all these simulations are on grade three and up. So we don't really know what's happening in these younger kids when they're learning to read at this critical time when they need these um, very structured instructions because that's the first thing to go. It's easy once they learn to read to say, read this chapter, and we'll come back and discuss. I mean, I'm not saying that that's easy, but um, I think it's, it, there's a particular argument to be made for younger kids, but there's no statistics on this because all the simulations are from grade three and up. So that's one piece. And we don't know which skills are being impacted more, phonological processing, um, letter sound knowledge, these kind of aspects, and especially younger kids, it's really hard to give access to technology as well. So there's a lot of kind of issues. The other one final thing I want to say is that there's something called the faucet theory um, that came out from the summer side literature. So if you give, um, so when you look at summer gap growth, that there's large variability. And um, I think what people have said is that the summer gaps, 80% of it can be, um, or 80% of the um, achievement gap can be explained by um, this um, I'm sorry, by the summer, uh, summer slide, and it starts as early as kindergarten that you can see an impact in high school and college. So it's just very scary to think that even summer has this impact. What happens when it's nine months, there's students who have not even called into school, even though the teachers offer opportunities. I think all those things really scare me what's happening over the past nine months. Oh, I didn't explain about the faucet theory, but when you give good instructions to students, um, this gap closes. So the, those who are more um, low income students have much higher gains when you give a solid evidence-based instructions or books, share book reading, these kind of opportunities to students, they really gain more, which also means that this time is, uh, is really problematic, but I'll stop here. <laughs>